What's up everybody, it's Coding Jesus, and today I wanted to talk about something that's very important, albeit underlooked in C++, and this is pretty applicable to anything, really. And that is comments. I'm going to talk about the two types of comments, or two ways you can write comments, and kind of the three reasons, or the three scenarios that I break comments down into. That being used at the library scope, or the programming scope, explaining what's actually going on. The second is function scope, explaining how things are being done. And the last is statement scope, explaining why they're being done that way. Now, before we get into the content of this video, guys, I just wanted to let you know that only around 10% of the people that actually watch my videos are subscribed. So if you wanna keep up to date, if you don't wanna miss out on anything, make sure to hit that subscribe button below this video and also smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps me a lot and helps promote my message and spread the gospel of Coding Jesus. Speaking about gospel, guys, if you wanna join our Discord, we have a Discord in the link down below in the description box down below. We also, or I also, have a Patreon. So if you want to tithe, if you want to support this channel financially, then make sure to click on that Patreon link once again in the description box below to do so. So in C++, there are two ways to comment, right? You can have two forward slashes where anything here is fair game, right? And then you can also have a forward slash with a star and you end with a, for, uh, a star and a forward slash. Now, in th this form of commenting, anything in between the slash star, star forward slash, is fair game for comments. So you can write whatever you want here, right? Anything you want in here is fair game. Okay, now let's actually look at how would I would go about using code in three, you're using comments in code in three scenarios. So the first one is on program or library scope. So let's say I have this library and it's class, we have like a class library and one of the classes in this class library is called the grade calculator. And I want to actually describe what's going on in this class library. So at the top of my program, I'm going to use a multi-line comment and I'm going to describe what this library actually does, what its purpose is. So purpose of library, right? And I might have one, I might have two, I might have credits where I'll say coding Jesus, coding Mary, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So that's one use case for, for comments. So here I'd use a multi-line comment, once again, program or library scope. The next thing I do, or when I'm thinking about comments, kind of the next scenario I'd use a comment in is function scope. And I'd be using a comment to describe how things are being done. And the reason I say how instead of what is because in an actual function, you don't want the coder to actually, or the person looking over your code, it might be you, it might be somebody else, you don't want them to have to read over every single line of code to understanding to understand how a result is being produced. Okay, so let's say I have a grade calculator. Public, I'm gonna make it static, it's gonna return a double. It's going to say, get average, it's gonna take a vector of doubles, and it's gonna calculate a simple average, class of grades, okay? I'm just gonna return the default value for double here, and I'm also going to include vector. Okay, so I've included that, and what I do here is, let's say my get average function is a lot of lines, and, and maybe I might not remember what each line does three months from now, and maybe three months from now, somebody else will be looking at my code and they don't want to have to read over maybe a hundred line function, right? So what I'll do here is I'll explain how things are being done. So I might explain something like this, okay? Grade uh, get average is calculated as such. Step one, uh, get a random number. Step two, take X amount of grades from class grades where X is the random number in step one etc etc so here i'm describing how things are being done in the function as opposed to what i'm doing the reason i don't want to describe what i'm doing is if i find myself describing what i'm doing it's most likely because my code's garbage and my code's unreadable and it just isn't self-documenting right code in function scope should be self-documenting in the sense that i don't need to tell somebody what i'm doing it should be clear it should be clear from the function name, it should be clear from the parameter names, it should be clear from the return value, and it should generally be clear by the code that's actually in my function. Okay, now let's get to the third use case for comments. The third use case for comments is really describing why something's being done, okay? So let's say that it's possible for a grade in the class grades vector to be negative. And I know that my faculty wants me to write this class library not processing negative grades. So any negative grade will be replaced with a zero. So let's say in my function, let's say I have this loop, right? Auto grade in class grades. And in my loop, I say if the grade is less than zero, I set the grade equals to zero. OK, 
okay? What's going on here is simple. It's easy to understand, it's self-documenting. I'm going through every grade in class grades, and if I find a number less than zero, I'm setting it to zero. So I don't have to provide a comment explaining what I'm doing here. Well, like I said, don't do that, your code should be self-documenting. I should be explaining why I'm setting a negative grade to zero. What I might say is something like this. Faculty at Smith School of Business requires all negative grades to be rounded to the nearest non-negative grade, i.e. zero. Okay, something like that, a reason explaining why I'm doing something the way I am, because to be frank, if you're looking at a function called get average and there's class grades, you wouldn't really expect a grade to be negative. And even if it is, you wouldn't have thought or have the foresight or have the knowledge to think that, hey, that grade should actually be zero instead of negative one. So here I'm explaining why I'm doing so. Okay, guys, that's the end of the video. Once again, I like to keep these less than 10 minutes. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, post in the comment section what you want to learn next for me, what you want the next video to be about. And once again, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. Cheers.